Now I know the title of this video sounds a little bit egotistical, sounds a little bit arrogant. That's not really the point that I'm trying to make really. I, I'm really trying to help you guys. And just to be clear, I think there are many greater photographers out there, especially where snakes are concerned than myself. Uh, a few that come to the top of my mind are Zach Herr, ZTH Photography, Jay Tomsky, who works over there at the Reptarium. Even my buddy Riley takes some amazing photographs. Mike Schultz over at Outback Reptiles, fantastic photography. You should check all these guys out. My point for this video is mostly to help you with your own photography, specifically for showing snakes on Morph Market and upping your game there. I just posted some snakes to Morph Market last night and some of them have sold already. And these are snakes we're talking that are in the price range, the four figure price range, sold within a matter of hours. And I know the photography has a lot to do with that. I'm sure the channel, the outrage too, but somebody told me a while back that good quality photos help sell snakes. And so I'm just trying to help you guys and give you as much info as I can to help you be a better photographer of anything. I got a clean snake poop. I've got something I'd really like to share with you guys today, and that is this. There you go, dude. Mm, breakfast. Ah, top of the morning, friends and family. How are you wonderful, beautiful people doing today, beautiful? We got our girl Patsy Ross right here. Patsy LaRue. I got too many snakes and too many names. Had a fresh shed, so I want to show her beauty off to you guys. Yes. I can. Ah, <laughs> uh, a nice snake. A very nice snake indeed. Hurry, you getting away? You better hurry up. <laughs> Come on, do 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 it. You want me to do it? Okay. Go to do it. It's scary? <laughs> you should be scared. That's a big snake right there. A little bit of scared is good. Keep you safe. Uh, the camera doesn't make you safe, no. <laughs> Get I've got something I'd really like to share with you guys today, and that is this. My giant light box. If you watched recently, we did a video on trying to help people how to take better pictures of their snakes for Morph Market, specifically with a cell phone so you didn't have to buy anything at all. So I wanted to show you guys kind of what I do to take pictures of my snakes from Morph Market because I haven't put any up there in a long time. I kind of sell my snakes straight out of here, meeting people through here on YouTube. So I, just, I wanted to give myself at least a little bit of a presence on Morph Market since I haven't hardly had one at all up there for like the last year and a half. And I got some snakes that I want to take pictures of today. So the light box is the first step and I like to have a nice big one. For those of you guys that don't have Freedom Breeder shelves, I mean, I'm jealous of myself right now. Not that you can't do this on a table, but I mean, how convenient is that? So here's basically what I have going on. If you remember the last video, we talked about the importance of diffusing light was the most important part about taking a good photo. Making sure that light is nice and soft and very pleasing to the eye. And that's what I'm trying to achieve here manually. The nice thing about this is I don't have to worry about the sun and what it's doing. I can set everything up manually on the camera, set the white balance manually to the flash and have complete control over every single shot so that each snake looks exactly the way it does in person and that each shot is easily edited in post with one click of a button. I, I edit one the way it wants, I want it to be and I know the light's gonna be exactly the same for each photo, so just boom. If I take 100 snake photos, all I have to do is edit one and hit one button and it automatically edits the rest of them in Lightroom. It's a very streamlined process. It's something I've finally <laughs> gotten somewhat down. I'm always learning new little tiny techniques to try and make it better and better. But if you missed that first video, I'll link it right here. Go back and watch it. I had a lot of people tagging me on Instagram with their newfound beautiful snake photos that they've been taking with my little cell phone technique. So I appreciate you guys doing that. And I, I'm glad you guys appreciate the information I put out there. It seemed like it worked well, which I'm glad for. 
Why else would I make the video? So here's what I got. I've got a remote trigger that goes on top of my DSLR here that triggers two other flashes. One being here from the side that I use as a little bit of fill light to come in and get diffused by the box. And then I've got one up in the rack that's pointed up at the ceiling to bounce the light off of the ceiling and then diffuse it down through the box and finally into the box. It's a lot of diffusion, maybe a little bit overkill, but <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> So before I take pictures, I, I get my exposure right. I take a few test shots and get it good in here. And I take this little gray card, I set it inside because I'm gonna use this to set my white balance after the fact, because this is neutral gray. And if I set my white balance in the photo to this gray afterwards, it should be perfect, like exactly perfect. Because I could tag the, the white in this, but this, this thing here is old. I could probably use a new one. It's starting to get a little bit yellowish, um, so just making sure I get accurate colors. That's what the point behind this is. Toothbrush from the dentist the other day, whatever, it's easy, it doesn't move. Oh, it moved. Set my white balance to flash, start snapping. Generally, I would dim down the lights in this room a lot more, but for the purpose of the video, it's not gonna work to do that. I just don't want to have, you know, eliminate any other sources of light as much as possible while still being able to focus. What are you doing? Mind of its own. And, and uh, yeah, but generally, that's what I would do. I also manually set my flashes to exactly how bright they flash. There's a lot of manual stuff going on here. If you don't know anything about how to manually control a camera, there's a video for that too right here. It's something you need to do to use this technique, but the point of this video is more to just show you what my setup is and, and what the results are from this setup. So when I took a picture right now with the flash off, the picture is black. And that kind of lets me know that all this other light that's happening around us right now is not really making its way into the photo, which is what I want. If you guys would like to know exactly what my settings are for this setup, this side flash over here, I've got at, oh, what was it? I've got it at 1 8th power. The flash bouncing off the top, I've got it 1 3rd stop below full power. My camera settings are 200 on the shutter speed, which is the fastest you can do when shooting flash on this camera. And F8 for your aperture, which is the ideal aperture for being there, making it seem like you're actually there in person as far as depth of field anyway. And uh, the ISO is set at 250, which is kind of the best setting for this camera to get the highest quality picture possible. Maybe 200, 250, somewhere in there. And that's what the settings are for those of you that are really wondering what the manual settings are. And that's what I finally arrived at to be the perfect settings to get the best picture in camera. Our first victim is gonna be this Enchi Fire Coral Glow Double Het Clown Pied Male. He's just starting to get his spots. He's been eating like a champion. He's gonna be going to somebody who really wants to have kind of a powerhouse here for the Clown Pied project. And uh, let's take his photo. <laughs> One and done. <laughs> now what I like to do in between snake photos is I like to stick something in there. Like I'll take my, I'll take my gray card and put it in there in between shots because sometimes you have a snake like I've got a couple of super coral glow het pied males that I'm taking pictures of and to tell them apart in a picture would be a lot harder than just sticking something in between shots. So when I import all my photos into Lightroom, I can easily see a little marker that goes in between the shots of snakes. Cause sometimes I'll take three or four shots of a snake just to make sure I get a really good one. In fact, even though I think that that one's good, I'll take a couple more just in case. And then again, something kind of marker visually on a photo, thank you to digital photography, we can take thousands of photos. And then I have a little marker that marks between snakes. Little pro tip, I guess. And it's certainly good to have a couple of different shots of your snake, like one from the top down, one kind of from the side angle, several different angles, depending on what your morph market account allows for. I even put video of my snakes up there so people can see that, and that's an option on there as well. I'm gonna do that as well, and you'll see that process too. Now this right here is my video setup. One light, I turn off all the other lights in the room, including these, oh T, where'd you put my light? That little dinga, she stole my remote. Nope, it's right here, I'm a doof. Turn those off, every other light off in the room because video, you need more light and you need your camera wide open. You can't block out all the other light as easily as you can with a flash. So it's a little overkill maybe. Got this big umbrella lantern style light above the light box. 
And for those of you who think it's overkill, maybe it is. But you know what? I really enjoy what I do and I have fun doing this. And it just makes me happy. But here's the setup. We've got the camera locked off on a tripod. Got a little rotating uh, turntable underneath that I put my little logo board on top of. Little inanimate object to uh, make sure the focus is good before I start bringing snakes into the game. That's basically it. Let him do a little spin a lot of doodah and upload a clip to YouTube Unlisted with a little of me playing guitar in the background, a little triple B theme. And that's it, man. It's, it's like that. Here, you want to see it in, in action? There it is. I mean, it's a little bit of a painstaking process, sure. It takes time, you know, you gotta deal with animals that maybe don't wanna sit still and you gotta deal with foreheads that are maybe way too bright in the light. But that's just uh, it's the name of the game. Name of the game. It's it kinda, in my opinion, it shows a little bit of pride and care in, in everything you do. Take this amount of time to, to do stuff like this, but it is time consuming. It's not for everybody, but I figured I'd share it with you anyway. You, you down? You good with it? Yeah. Okay. I hope that all made sense to you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed all that and we're gonna get some value from that video, this video. <laughs> I wanted to share a little story with you guys. Our chickens recently discovered that one of them was actually a rooster. And I was okay with it. I'm, I'm kind of like a, a rooster myself. I'm year of the rooster in the Chinese zodiac. I'm also a Leo and <laughs> actually that's a funny story. One of my friends a long time ago was kind of came up with this. He's like, so you're a Leo rooster. So what you're trying to tell me is you're a lion cock. <laughs> it was actually Noah's chicken that he had been raising that turned out to be the rooster. And it started crowing one morning. I was like, oh, that's cool. Like I'm, I'm a rooster in a, in a bit, I, in a way. I, I rise as soon as the sun gets light, like I'm up. So not a big deal. Even my neighbor over here was like, oh, I like the sound of it. Like he likes the natural sounds out here. He's an anti-city guy. So he was, he was stoked actually. But yesterday morning, Hillary heard it and woke her up. And that was it. <laughs> Immediately she's looking for a new home for the rooster. Noah Sage, quite devastated that that was your, his rooster. Right now, how'd, how'd you feel about having Red Rock uh, move along from, from here? Not too bad. You didn't feel too bad? But I feel kind of bad. Yeah, it seemed to me that you had some, some tears to shed about the situation, which is totally cool. Like, you know, I get it, I get it. You didn't want to, that's your little baby you kind of raised up. You didn't want to lose him, right? Yeah. But, but instead, now now what do you got? Can you show us? The black and white one's name is Ironfoot. She's a silver lace, lion dot. And that kind of golden brown one is, her name is Honeycomb and... She's something summer. So Noah got two chickens, so he's a happy camper. Our rooster went to a, a lovely home where he can do his rooster thing without waking up Hillary. <laughs> I'm sharing your rooster story. Telling everybody how you, you heard the rooster yesterday morning, and, and that was all it took. <laughs> Bye. I had heard it another morning, but uh, yesterday was the earliest. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about your rooster. Yeah, I mean, sleep is important. <laughs> Our kids don't exactly go to bed early, and neither do you. But I'm up sir, first. Well, yeah, but there's probably going to be some mornings you don't want to be up with the rooster. <laughs> well, I know, it's a hard decision. What do you know? You're drawing? <laughs> Why do you draw on yourself? Because I like it. You like it? Anything else? Crocodiles. Crocodiles? <laughs> Anything else? Crocodiles. Yeah, crocodiles. Anything else? Wild crats. Wild crats. Wild crats? Anything else? Alligators. Alligators? Anything else? Buddha. Buddha? 
<laughs> Anything else? <laughs> That's a lot, Dee. That's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff today. Oh. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff. Sorry if that Sorry if that video seemed a little dark or something. I was trying to do the exposure right and it's weird and midday out here. I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope those video and photo tips are beneficial for you and that they work well and up your game on your life, snakes, photos, and all that good stuff. Please take care of yourselves and take care of each other. I'll see you uh, tomorrow night on the live stream with Justin Kabilka. Good times. Triple B TV. Link in the description. Bye.